Welcome to Really Random Tutorials. Today I'll be showing you how to do the 2.3.7 Cisco Packet Tracer activity. So here when you open up the uh, activity, you'll get your instructions in the Packet Tracer window. Something you can do is down here in the bottom left of the instructions, you can click on Dock and it'll keep it on the left side. I'm just going to read through these and show you how to do them. Objectives. Part 1. Establish ba basic connections, access the CLI, and explore help. Part 2. Explore EXEC modes. Part 3. Set the clock. Background slash scenario. In this activity, you will practice skills necessary for navigating the Cisco IOS, such as different user access modes various configuration modes and common commands used on a regular basis. You will also practice accessing uh, the con context sensitive help by, config by configuring the clock command. Instructions Part 1. Establish basic connections. Access the CLI and explore help. Step 1. Connect PC1 to switch one using a console cable. So here it'll say click the connections icon, uh, go down here to the lightning bolt, it'll be uh, on the lower left corner, and select the light blue console cable. And it says click it on PC1, select RS232, Then click together into switch one and select it to console. Now if you go down to step two, establish a terminal session with switch one. Then click on PC1 and select the desktop tab. Click on PC1, desktop, then select terminal. And now it'll ask you what is the settings for uh, bits per second? Here's the bits per second. It's 9,600. The screen that appears may have several messages displayed. Somewhere on the screen there should be a press return to get started. Now to get there you gotta click OK first. And now it'll say press return to get started. If you just click enter on your keyboard, it'll show S1 is greater than and that is your switch one prompt so now it says what is the prompt displayed on the screen it's the switch one prompt step three explore the ios help the ios can provide help for commands depending on the level accessed the prompt currently display, displayed is called user exec. When it says S1 and then has this greater than sign, that means you're in user exec mode. And the device is waiting for a command. The most basic form of help is to type a question mark. So let's just type a question mark and immediately, even if I hit enter, it'll show you all of the commands available to you. Now, if you type in the letter C, that would, it's asking you uh, which command starts with the letter C, and that's connect. And at the prompt, type T and then a question mark. Do T question mark. And here it'll give you all the options uh, for commands that start with the letter T. So telnet, terminal, and trace route are the options. Now, if you type in TE, and then a question mark, it'll give you the option that have TE right in front of it. So now it's Telnet and Terminal. To, uh, this is called Context Sensitive Help. It provides more information as commands are expanded. Part 2 Explore Exec Modes. In part two of this activity, you'll switch to privilege exec mode and issue additional commands. Step one, 
privilege, uh, enter privileged exec mode. At the prompt, type the question mark. Now if we type in a question mark, we can go through here and see all the different commands available to you. So one of them is enable. If you read the description, it says turn on privileged, privileged commands. So it wants to type in en, and if you click on tab, it'll auto-complete the rest. Or you can just type in enable and hit enter. And then now you'll notice it says S1 which, with a uh, hashtag sign. And this just means you're now in privileged exec mode. So scroll down here. Mm -hmm. Alright. Enter the enable command and press enter. How does the prompt change? So yeah, it just has the yeah, S1 and the hashtag. And then when prompted, type the, uh, the question mark. Now if you type in question mark, you'll see we have a lot more options. And when it says more, you have to click spacebar and it'll show you the rest of it. Then I want you to find one command that starts with letter C. We got clear, clock, configure, connect, copy. And they're asking how many commands are there total? And if, once you go through and count it, uh, you'll see there is, I think there's 20, give me a second. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There are 28 commands in total. Now, let's see here. When in privileged exec mode, one of the commands to start with the letter C is configure. Type either the full command or as type uh, or enough of the command to make it unique, then press tab. We'll just type in configure, hit enter. Now it'll say configuring the terminal memory in network terminal. Press enter to accept. Now this is just uh, the terminal parameter. It's asking if that's what you want to do. Just hit enter. And now it'll say S1 for switch one, configure, and we're in exit. Uh, privileged executive mode. So now we're in the configure mode. Now it says press enter to accept. How does the prompt change? It just uh, we go into configure mode. This is called global configuration mode. This mode will be explored further in upcoming activities and labs. For now, return to privileged exec mode by typing end, exit, or control Z. We'll type in end, enter. And then enter one more time to go back to privileged exact mode. Part three, set the clock. Step one, use the clock command. So if you type in clock, this is so you need to type in show clock so that it'll give you the clock. So here we have military time. Then we have the day and the uh, month, day of the month and the year. So now they want us to change uh, the clock. So what information is displayed? Now I want you to use, use the context sensitive help in the clock command to set the time on the switch of the current time into the command clock and, pr uh, and press enter. So now if you type in clock, hit enter it'll tell you we have an incomplete command. That means we need more of the command for it to do anything. So if you do clock space question mark, it'll tell you what the next parameter needs to be. So it says clock, and then it says you need to put a set. If you do clock, oh actually it auto completes for you. Then type in set, and then if you do space and question mark, hit enter, it'll tell you it's still incomplete.
they want you to put in the current time. So it'll add, so if you go back over here to read the uh, questions, it'll say what information is being requested. So now it wants us to put the time in. Um, now based on the information requested by issuing the clock set command, enter a time of 3 p.m. by using the 24 hour format. That's just military time. So we'll do clock set, we'll do 15 colon zero zero colon zero zero. And if we do space question mark, it'll say now they want the month of the year. If we'll go back over here to our side page where it goes our information, they want us to, they'll have a year they want to set. Now it says attempt to set the date 0, 1, 31, 2, 0, 3, 5, using the format requested. It may be necessary to request additional help using contact sensitive help to complete the process. We, finishing, we finished issuing the show clock command to display the clock setting. The result command output sh should display as uh, the date, uh, the time, then this date. So here it wants to know the months. The month is January, a uh, one is January. You should type in J A N space question mark. Now it wants to know the day of the month. We'll put in 31. We put a question mark again. Now it wants to know the year. We're going to put in 2035. Because that's what it wants us to do. And now it just says you get enter. Now that we've entered, we can check. It doesn't give us an error, so now we can check if we're right. If we did it right. So we'll type in show and clock, hit enter. Now it should have what we just entered, and it does. Now I'll scroll down. If you're not successful, try following the command. Uh, try uh, try the following command to obtain the output. So if you can't get it to work, you can just copy this in. Just click out of that. All right, let's scroll down some more. Step two, explore additional command messages. The iOS provides various outputs for incorrect or incomplete commands. Continue to use the clock command to explore additional messages that may be encountered as you learn to use the iOS. Issue the following commands and record messages. I just want to type in these commands. Do CL and then tab. Then it wants to know what happened. We just got CL back because there wasn't enough information to autocomplete. Then I want us to type in clock, enter. I want to know what happened. It says incomplete command and as we found out it's just not finished yet. You have to type in some more. Now let's type in clock set to five colon zero zero colon zero zero. Enter. It was the invalid input uh, detected at, and then it gives you this marker. So if you go back over to the marker, it'll point towards the 25. Now this format is a 24 hour format, you can't have 25. So it has to be 24 or less. Now if we do clock set 15 colon zero zero colon zero zero, Base 32 and hit enter, it'll give us that error again. This time it'll say 32 because we have to have the month next, and there's not 32 months. And that should be it. Now you can just exit out of this whenever you're ready. And that is how to do the uh, 2.3.7 Cisco Packet Tracer activity. If you enjoyed the video, learned something, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.